Now that we have loaded the data from the API and labeled each article as news or other, we're now ready to look at the article to classify or the article that we're going to actually classify here. Sometimes I'll call that the target article. So um, we'll see right here. I'm going to look at uh, specifically article 53, 141, and 309 as uh, three examples. Um, let's go ahead and look at the headline for article 53. So if I go look at that headline, it is Art of Questioning Semicolon. Some jogger defense lawyers fear a colleague's apostrophe cross dash examinations. And uh, remember, the strategy here is we're going to parse this headline. Essentially, we're going to make each one of those words its own string. We'll look at each word individually. We'll see what percentage of the news articles contain that word, what percentage of the other articles contain that word. Sum up all those percentages in the news, the category news or other that has the, the biggest sum. That's what we'll classify it as. So in order to do that, we're going to have to parse again this headline, and we're going to go through that in this particular element. First, I want to confirm that it actually is an other. Uh, so I'll just look at the article to classify news or other column, and we've confirmed there that it's another. And let's move on to the kind of more subtle pieces of what we're doing here. So there's a library called TM, and that's uh, text mining. And a lot of times in natural language processing or text mining, there are stop words. And stop words are words that are reasonably common to both what you would think would be news or other. Uh, the words like if and a and my and... I'll show you all the stop words actually right here because there are quite a few of them. So again, inside of the library, the package TM, we have a function called stop words and it returns all of these predefined stop words. You have is, am, are, had, there, could, so on and so forth, once. And I think uh, somewhere in here there's a um, and then there's I. So you get the idea. And what I might want to do, again, subjective, you might want to leave these in. But um, what we're going to do is say, uh, we don't think going in, we'll assume that these aren't going to help us a lot in deciding if something's news or other. They're just words that you might find in either one. So we only want to classify what we're going to deem the important words. So we'll use that here in just a second. But the first thing I would want to do, or the next thing I want to do, is use some of these string manipulation in, um, in regular expressions um, to actually uh, get at each word in this headline. So what we're going to do first uh, is... Um, note this set right here, and we covered this a little bit before, but seeing that set that I've highlighted right there, that's a regular expression for all the alphanumeric numbers. That's a set of all the A's through Z's and the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0 to 10, or 0 to 9 numbers. So those are the alphanumeric numbers. Now notice if you have a bracket and inside that bracket you have the caret, that then means the caret is not. So this whole set that I've outlined is anything but the alphanumeric characters. It's all the alpha character, alpha, I mean, yeah, all the characters that are not alphanumeric. So that's what this is. So what we're going to do is we're going to essentially take out the non-alphanumeric characters from the headline. And that'll take out the semicolon, that'll take out the dash, that'll take out the apostrophe. We might want to leave the dash. There's always room for improvement in, uh, in most code in this classifier, certainly. But again, that's something for a discussion a little bit later. So what we're going to do, though, is string replace all. And of course, I'm going to replace the headline in that article, the article that classifies headline. And notice what I'm doing here. I'm going to replace all of the not alphanumeric characters. I'm going to look at all the characters that are, I'm going to identify all the characters that are not alphanumeric, and I'm going to replace them with a null, with a nothing. And that's uh, effectively erasing them. And so let's go ahead and look at that. So if I just highlight this, I'll kind of run it piece by piece before I run it all together. And after we've done that, now notice that the semicolon is gone, the apostrophe is gone, and the dash is gone. Um, so the next thing I'd like to do is parse it. So I'm going to do a string split now, and I'm going to string split um, based on the word boundary. So we've seen this one before too, boundary word. And what that's going to do is it's going to um, take the beginning of art and the end of art, the beginning of of and the end of of, the beginning of questioning and the end of questioning. And that will... If we do the string split here, return a list that we'll show here in just a second. And notice what it's done. It's taken each word and parsed it and made its own string. And there's no spaces or, or special characters, non-alphanumeric characters in there. It's just that pure word. Um, but notice it's a list. So you can tell that because it's got this kind of double bracket notation up here. So I'd like to unlist it. 
So that'll give me the text. I'll just go ahead and run that. And now I have the text. Notice that it's just can be indexed very easily. One, two, three, four. And I've got art of questioning some and you've got the rest of it in here. Again, arguably, maybe you want to keep that dash in here for cross-examinations, in which case we would just add some code and some logic in order to keep that. Um, but for this uh, proof of concept, um, it's not going to be really important. So um, so what I'm going to do now is think about, notice I still have like words like of and a in there, and, um, and I'd like to uh, take those out. I'd like to just have this stop words. Those are both some of the stop words. So what I'm going to do is have words to take out and um, giving them the stop words from the TM package. So now just words to take out is an object that contains all of these. And notice what I'm going to do next. So we're, we're familiar now with this uh, special uh, character for word boundaries. And what I would like to do is I want, if I take out a word, I want to take out the word I. I don't want to take out words that have I in it, of course. Same thing with A. I don't want to take out words that have A in it. If it's a single word that says A, I'd like to take that out because that's a stop word. But I don't want to take out park because I'm kind of focused here on central park jogger. So if I just took out all the words that had an A in it, that would not be very helpful to me. So what we're going to do uh, to do that is to make a regular expression. And we're going to put these word boundaries on the beginning and the end of all these words to say, I'm looking for that word that starts with an A and ends with that A, and that starts with H here and ends right at T. So, um, and we can see how that's going to work. So let me just kind of show you what that's going to look like. It's going to look like a bunch of gobbledygook, but if you look at it as a regular expression, it actually makes a lot of sense. So checking this out, there's my I. And then it's got the end, so slash slash B. And then notice this vertical bar, right? It's the same as that vertical bar right there. That's saying or. So what this is going to say when I pass it later is to identify the word I or the word me or the word my. Not words that have my in it, M-Y in it, but actually starts and ends the word my or the word myself. And then you get down here or the word into, or the word through, or the word during, you get the idea. But notice that we also need that, um, that word boundary at the beginning of I, and we need it at the end of very. And so that's what this line of code will do here. Using the string C, it will then add that to the beginning and to the end. So now we've got this regular expression that I can pass on, that I'm about to pass on, in order to take out these stop words, the word not, again, words that might contain that particular string. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to show you that. Um, so the text is the headline, if you can recall. And what I'm going to do is try to detect in that headline, and I've got that my regular expression call, and the only reason I'm doing that is so that I can ignore my case, so I can use the ignore case option. So I'm going to say regex words to take out, ignore the case, so that's a little a in the words to take out. And so I'm looking for a little a or a big a little I and a big I, but I'm looking for just A and just I or just the word because I got word boundaries around it. So I want to do that. So it's string to text is going to pass a true back when it finds them and a false when it doesn't find them. So I do that. Oh, I missed a parentheses there. Oops. So notice my little plus sign here. So I'll just add a parentheses. And this is false, true, false, true, false, false. So it's got some of these words I want to take out. I want to take out uh, the second word. I want to take out the fourth word. And let's remind ourselves what that is. So the second word is of. The fourth word is some. And I'll bet, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The ninth word is probably a, a, a word too. I hope it is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, that word A was also a stop word. So how are we going to do that? Notice it's got an exclamation mark here. And that, of course, is not so it's saying, hey, go to the text and return all of the words that are not words to take out. So what I would like to do is to say, hey, let's turn all these falses to true, because those are words we want to keep, and all the trues to falses. And then I'll say, okay, let's go through the text and tell me all the words I want to keep. So notice what this is. It's just saying, hey, all the trues are now falses, all the falses are trues, and all the trues are falses. So now if I send all those trues, which are the words I want to keep, to the text, it will return just those words. So that's exactly what these lines of codes are doing. You've got kind of embedded function calls. But um, at the end of the day, we have the important words that we've parsed 
for our article to classify. Our next step in the next uh, video, we're going to look at each of these words and the frequency, the, per, the percent of the news articles that each come up in and the percent of the other articles that each come up in for each word. Then, of course, sum those percents together and I'll be ready to classify. But that's it for this one. I'll see you next time. Great job. Really great job.